Oh, that's annoying, I tell you what. I've been here sitting to this, listen to this music in my head all this time, all this time, and y'all didn't hear not any of it because I had my desktop audio off. So that is irritating. But hello, everybody. Good evening. I had a little bit of hiccups, and I don't have the best light quality tonight because apparently my ring light decided to die. That's what I use to give most of my lighting. So I've just got my desk lamp, which is very difficult to get a good light source with that. That's just too bright. Makes me look scary. So, oh, that's the best we could do tonight. So let me do something real quick before people start trying to call. Let me hide this. So I actually have something I want to talk about tonight. Now, my live streams normally is anything goes, ask me any questions that you want. And I, by all means, I am going to go through that tonight. We're going to talk about stuff. But first, I want to go over life cycles of bugs and explain a couple things. I had an exterminator. Um, actually, I need to get these links. My wife sent me links, but I think she sent them through Messenger. She did. Um, let me see if I can get those. I want to send them through Facebook because then I can load them onto my webpage here and I can share it with you because I want to share a couple websites with you guys tonight. I do this and do this and do this and do that. There we go. That way those are sent over. So tonight I'm going to go over life cycles of bugs, um, namely bed bugs and the differences between bed bugs and other types of bugs. So, uh, and the reason this is, is because I had somebody actually contact me and we were talking, we were discussing um, life cycles and larva, instars, different things like that. And so I wanted to go over that tonight real quick. Um, if I can get my Facebook to load properly. And you'll have to forgive me, I'm exhausted. My son, my six-month-old, seven-month-old seven son today, he uh, he's going through this teething process, which requires him to keep me up all night. Hey, CJ. How do fruit flies come about? They uh, come for fruit. People bring them in their house on fruit, bananas especially, onions, potatoes, and they end up breeding in the house. But, um, which is good. Fruit flies. Fruit fly is a good example. So, fruit fly is a fly. Um, flies produce larva. Now, in insects, let's share my screen here. I want to show you guys my screen. Um, so this is a beetle. This is a beetle life cycle. Now, a beetle is a, um, it's a, you know, a beetle, like a ladybug or a wood boar beetle or, um, a powder post beetle or, you know, lots of different types of beetles exist. So these are beetles. These are actually pictures of a beetle life cycle. So let's just click one. Let's figure out which one we want. Let's go with images. Um, all right, let's, let's do this, this one right here. Okay. So this image is, all right, so you've got the adult. The adult here lays eggs. The eggs become a grub, and the grubs have instars. Now, grubs are a little different than, say, larva. So larva are like from a fly. So this, this, these will shed skin, these grubs. As they get larger, they shed their skin, but then they go into a pupa stage like this, and they become an actual, like a chrys chrys chrysalis or a cocoon pupa stage, and then when they cut, they, they change kind of like a butterfly through metamorphosis, and they become an adult beetle. Now, bed bugs aren't quite like this, and let me show you another one. Fly life cycle. So here's the fly life cycle here. Let's see if I can get that image. There we go. All right. See, you have an adult fly, you have eggs, you have a larval stage. So larvas aren't exactly the same as a uh, instar. And, uh, and, and those on TikTok that want to see pictures will not be able to see a picture because I am actually streaming live on YouTube. The link's in my bio. Um, let me show you. Let me show you what i got going on here. I'm going to do my phone so you guys can see what I see. So this is my streaming setup here. 
So that's that's what I do. There's my YouTube audience. There's there's my pictures and everything that I share, my whole setup and everything I've got going on. So in order to see the stuff that the YouTube audience sees, you have to come on YouTube. I'm sorry. That's the best I can do you. I can't share my stuff through TikTok. Don't know how to do it. So most everything I do is stream through YouTube. Um, but anyway, like I was saying, the larval stages, they're, they're basically like a little worm. Like a, like a, it's not like a instar. So we're going to go over instars and we're going to go over larval stages. So these are different larval stages. As they get larger, they become a pupa or like a caterpillar, cocoon, or a chrysalis. And they go into this pupa stage. They metamorphosis, which is they change into something completely different. They change from a larva, like a worm, into a fly, like what you see here. The, the beetles are the same way. They've got the larval stage they go through. They go into a pupa stage, and then they become a beetle. They change. They metamorphosize into a beetle. Now, bed bugs aren't the same. Now, this, is, this was the argument that I had with, uh, with one of my customers. Was about, it wasn't really an argument. It was more of just instructing him and trying to teach him what they were. So a bed bug isn't the same. So what he said, and the, and the thing that got this conversation started, was he was talking about the, the larval stage of a bed bug. And so let's go over here. He was actually quoting a, um, a website. He was actually quoting a website, and that's what I'm getting here. Let me show you a website that he showed me. Now, I'm, I'm going to, it's a website. This is a website. I'm not talking bad about anybody, but it's a website. I'm going to try my best to not, I'm not, I don't want to defame anybody or say, you know, they don't know what they're talking about, but here's a website. I share all websites. I don't try to hide anything. I'm not going to take somebody's information. That's why I use Google. That's why I search through Google and tell you everything that I know. All right. Now, they have this picture uh, the, of the nymphal stages. Now, the problem is, is that they want to talk about bed bug larva. What do bed bug larva look like? Well, bed bug don't have larva. They don't have a larval stage. So a larval stage is, and this is, this is where this, this conversation started because he's like, he's trying to show me this website about bed bug larvae. So bed bugs actually have what are called instar phases. They have instars. They don't have a larval stage. So this is from the CDC, the Center for Disease and Health and Control or whatever. Let's uh, open that image and let me show you that image. All right. So you have an adult bed bug. An adult bed bug lays an egg the egg hatches, it's called a first nymphal instar. So what is the difference between a instar and a larva? A larva is a worm, like a maggot, all right? A maggot, which everybody here probably knows what maggots are. They're like little caterpillars, little worms that come like flies. You know, they become flies later. Well, a bed bug doesn't ever have a larval stage. They don't have a worm or a maggot type stage. They have an instar. So basically, what hatches out from this egg is a, a young adolescent bed bug. Like people, all right? People grow, and we're born as babies, little babies, and we grow, and as we grow larger, we shed skin cells and stuff like bugs, and we become larger versions of ourselves, and eventually we, come, we become adults. So bed bugs are similar in that they have a baby, little nymphal stage, now, they will bite you. Every time they feed, they, they grow larger, and they're ready to shed their skin. So they feed, they shed their skin, they become a second instar. It's still a nymph. It's still a young adolescent. It's not a full-grown adult. But then it, it has another blood meal. It becomes the next third instar. It has a blood meal. It becomes a, a fourth instar. Then it has another blood meal. It becomes a fifth instar. Every time they shed their skin, they have another instar phase until they become an adult, a full-grown adult bed bug. So they don't have a worm stage or a larval stage. And that's why I wanted to go over. My wife's like, hey, you should go over that. You could explain to people the difference in life cycles of a bug, caterpillars, you know, bed bugs, beetles, and different things. Now, there are other bugs that have uh, instar phases, much the same as a bed bug. Um, cockroaches have instar phases. Grasshoppers, crickets, have an instar phase. They shed their skin and they become the next level up. So they're stink bugs. Stink bugs have instar phases. 
And so as they grow larger, they shed their skin and they become a larger version of themselves. And so that's the difference between a bed bug and say a fly where, let's see, let's open this image. Um, there we go. I thought I had it already open. But so you've got, they're, they're actually a worm that just gets larger and larger and larger until it pupates and then it becomes a fly. So that's the way that a fly works and they're not exactly the same way that they grow. So anyway, if you found that interesting, weird stuff. Anyway, mealworms eventually become beetles. So would mealworms be a larva? Yes, they would. The mealworms is, that is a larva. Caterpillars. Anything that goes through metamorphosis typically comes from a larva. Now, there are exceptions. You know, there are, there are more bugs in the world than there are any other animal in existence added together. You know, humans, cats, dogs, all the animals in the world added together, uh, including humans, do not even come close to how many bugs exist in different species and different, uh, you know, bugs on the earth. There are way more bugs than there are any other creature. So there probably are these, like, platypus. I call them, like, the platypus of, of bugs that do break that rule. But for the most part, you have the, the, the instar phases, and then you have the larval phases, and they are different. They are not the same. Bed bugs don't have a larva. And so basically that's what I'm trying to explain is bed bugs do not have a larval stage. And when, you, when exterminators go and they try to tell their customers that they have a larval stage, people will look up stuff. People will, you know, fact check you. And they'll prove that you don't know what you're talking about. So, so make sure you know what you're talking about before you open up a website and start instructing people about what, what bed bugs are. And let's talk about the bed bug larva. Bed bugs don't have larva. So anyway, I just wanted to, to uh, go over that today and try to explain some differences in, in life cycles. So as nerdy as that is, if anybody has any questions, don't hesitate to ask. But uh, anyway... Let's go ahead and, and turn the phone number back on now. If anybody wants to call, they're welcome to call and ask any questions. They, why? Well, look at that. Look, my screen is drunk, looks like, tonight. Fix that. There we go. So anyway, if you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to call me and give me give me questions. Let me see if I can get my everything loaded up over here. So there we go. Beetles creep me out, especially those giant water bugs. Oh my goodness, I am so sorry. I'm going to be yawning a lot tonight. Hey, Jennifer Lego, nice to see you tonight. What do you recommend for clothing moths? Mothballs. Mothballs work good on moths. I was told bed bugs can be dormant for a while. How long and does that mean... Okay, so, so typically bed bugs go through a dormant phase when there's no blood meal present. So if you're like a landlord and you want to evict your tenants because they have bed bugs because you believe that, um, you know, you can starve them out over two or three months and then they can come, they, you can move somebody else in. The bed bugs will be dead. That's not the way it works. Bed bugs can lay dormant for months at a time. Uh, some studies have even found bed bugs can lay dormant as much as 18 months without a blood meal. So um, that's a really long time. And uh, they can't really, sur I mean, they can survive a very long time without a blood meal. So, I mean, not years. We're not talking years. You know, some people I've seen, you know, three, four years. That's that's not possible. But they can go as long as 18 months. Now, albeit 18 months was found in a lab results, you know, with no adverse effect. They were in perfect conditions, kept in a the lab. They were able to get them to live that long. Um, but mostly it's between 10 and 18 months without a blood meal. Hello, I wanted to know how long the crossfire lasts when it's mixed. 24 hours. It, uh, it lasts for about 24 hours. So it's not going to last beyond 24 hours. Um, I've heard they can live near a year and a half without eating. Yes, that's true. They, um, but mothballs work really good for moths. Moths and other clothing pests that you can seal up with them. I got a bottle of Tempered FX I ordered, but now I'm worried I won't be able to use the whole one-gallon mix as I have a two-bedroom. Okay, so Tempered is not the same as Crossfire now. I don't know what the rules are on Tempered. Um, let me look. Let's see. Tempered. FX label. I will be yawning all night long. Mm, goodness me. Let's see what the Tempered label says. 
So here's a label of tempered for those that are curious. There's tempered FX. You can't see it because my picture's in the way. But let's see. What does it say? Mixing. Mixing information. Mix the appropriate amount of tempered effects insecticide with water. Add product. Agi okay, diluted spray mixture can be stored overnight. Agitate before using. Um, now, Crossfire specifically says 20, use within 24 hours. Um, this does not really say. So, I don't know what to tell you. This is this here's your bed bug control. So this is the bed bug um, rules and how to use tempered. It says uh, it takes uh, use rate is 0.075 uh, percent eight mill uh, so so this is how you mix it eight milliliters to a gallon I guess of tempered FX insecticide per gallon. Yep, a gallon of water controls bed bug populations that are resistant to pyrethroid insecticides. Same as Crossfire. Uh, efficacy of this product is not affected by heat treatment, so applications can be applied, uh, can be made before heat treatments uh, in integrated bed bug elimination programs. Spray bugs and eggs directly wherever possible, following site directions below. Um, it says for infested mattresses, remove linens, wash before reuse, apply to tough seams, folds, edges until moist, allow to dry before making bed. Apply to box spring. So this actually, they have changed the label of tempered since the last time I read. Because the last time I read the label for tempered, they would not allow you to treat an actual mattress with it. Uh, apply to bed springs, box springs, interior bed frames, headboards, including cracks, crevices, joints. When bed bugs are found in upholstered furniture, apply only to infested tough seams, folds, edges, to, but do not apply to flat surfaces where prolonged human contact will occur. If... Bugs heavily infest furniture. Inside cushions that are batting, apply a labeled insecticide dust to consider fumiga and consider fum fumigation. Applies crack crevice treatment. Uh, baseboards, moldings, blah, 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 blah. So basically the same place you can use Crossfire. So they've got a looser label than they used to have. So, But it doesn't say anything about how long it's good for once you mix it. It does say to you know use it, but it doesn't say if it lasts 24 hours or not. I'm exhausted, dude. Mm. I'm exhausted. Babies. Babies will definitely keep you up all night long. Definitely will do that. So how's everybody been doing? Got talking about larvae and bugs and stuff. And I forgot to ask how everybody was doing. Like the stream. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a thumbs down. Share me. Subscribe. See, go here. Go to go. To the, you're right there. You're right on the page. Like, let's let's see. Let's see here. Let's go F5. Let's refresh that. There we go. There I am. Look at that. Oh, sexy beast. All right. So then you go down here and you click this little red button right here. Subscribe. And then you click the notification bell. So there's a chat. See, there's everybody chatting right there. You can read the chat and everything. I look really bad in that picture. <laughs> let's see. Let's go back. Oh, my goodness. Listen to me talk. I don't like listening to myself talk. Um, let's take off the live and just go to my page because I usually will copy videos for everybody to see. There we go. So subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when I'm live. Hi, my dog takes flea and tick preventative Brevco, Brevtico, Brev, I'm not going to try to pronounce that. Oh, I did try. I can't. I, I failed. Um, works great for her. I was wondering, though, can the dog still bring fleas from outside? They can. They can. Um, if the fleas jump on the animal and use the animal like a taxi service into the house, then yes, they can. If they don't bite the animal, they can live. I had an exterminator come knocking on my door today. I told him I have a guy. <laughs> I heard that there are a lot of bed bugs in sleep clinics. Yes, yes, there can be. Not every sleep clinic. Some, some do. So hospitals have them too, and nursing homes, schools. Lots of places have bed bugs. Any tips on not bringing them home? Um, so, 
just be real careful what you touch, what you hold on to, what you grab on to. Don't bring your belongings into, like, so if you work there, what I tell people, and this is the same advice I give people work, nursing homes, healthcare, um, you know, schools. If you have a purse or a pocketbook or a bag or anything like that that you're bringing or a backpack or whatever that you're bringing in and out of these places, leave it in your car. Don't bring it in. Um, try not to sit down on certain things. You know, pieces of furniture, definitely not beds or sofas, couches, love seats, um, you know, reclining chairs, stuff like that. You don't want to sit down on these pieces of furniture because these are the type of furniture that you're going to, um, you know, end up contracting bed bugs from. So avoid those things. If I go into a house that has bed bugs, I don't use the furniture. I don't sit at the table. I don't sit on the couch. I don't sit on love seats. I don't sit down in the house at all. I will I will take my iPad, which I do all my work on my iPad. I don't have it here. But I, I do all of my work on my iPad. I take it out. I stand on the front porch, and I will open it up, or I will sit in my car, and I will fill out all the paperwork for the customer. I will bring it in. I will get them to sign it. I will take the iPad back out, put it back in my car. I don't, I don't leave anything in there. Same for cockroaches. I don't sit down on people's furniture or anything if they've got a cockroach-infested house either because you will take cockroaches home with you. You will. You'll take roaches home. You'll take bed bugs home. Stay off the furniture. Even when I'm flipping beds up, and in fact, the late my latest video, um, it has gotten just, I had no idea it would get so many views in just a couple of days. But my most recent video is luck was not on my side this time, how I brought bed bugs home. And it's had like over a thousand views in like less than 48 hours. It's insane how many people wanted to see this video. But um, it goes over how I brought bed bugs home, which I've talked about on my live streams before, how I brought them home. But I actually talk about how I brought them home and how I was able to eliminate them. And also the, the, the method in which that I use to try to keep myself from bringing bed bugs home with me because it happens. You know, you accidentally will do these things. I did it. It happened. I wasn't paying attention. I brought bed bugs home and I talk about how I got rid of them in that video. And so, you know, one of the things that I do is I wear booties. Uh, I don't I don't go in somebody's bed bug infested house with just regular shoes. I put booties on my boots. I wear gloves on my hands. I don't try to touch furniture or anything like that with my bare hands that have, you know, the possibility of getting eggs or things underneath my nails, you know, because the eggs are super tiny. You can transport them on your person. You can transport them on your clothing. So I, I just really try not to overexpose myself to someone else's furniture. I require my customers to remove uh, bedding, like sheets, comforters, um, you know, mattress encasements. All that stuff has to be removed before I come in the house because those are times that I'm going to be exposed and I'm going to risk taking them home with me. And that helps a lot. Over 23 years, and I, I've never brought them home except once. And that was seven months ago when Charlie, not Charlie, I'm sorry, Finley was born. So a week before he was born actually. So, oh, I got my house treated with crossfire, woke up at 3 a.m. finding bed bugs, found four more. Pest control told my, luckily I have tile floor instead of carpet. Still panicking though. Doesn't matter if you have carpet or tile. That's just, that's stupid. Um, they told you a stupid thing, but, uh, crossfire takes anywhere from three to five weeks to come full effect. You may still have to do a retreat, uh, usually I tell people that try to do it on their own within 30 to 90 days, it can take you to get rid of bed bugs on your own. Yeah, if you're doing it on your own. Now, pest control might be able to do it quicker. It just depends on the company. It depends on their methods. I'm 10 days from the pest control flea treatment and I'm still finding small ones. It takes 21 days to kill fleas after a flea treatment. And it doesn't matter what kind of pesticide you use, expect 21 days. Three weeks. Anything outside of three weeks, that's when I would call the pest control guy back out to maybe do a follow-up. I washed everything, even curtains, uh, put it on my box spring slip without fitted sheet. They ran through it. I put everything in totes, two years free. Now it's got to work. Now it got to work for it. I'm not, I don't think exactly I understand that. Maybe I'm just too tired. But I'm having a hard time piecing that message together, Dash for Glory. My wife and me and kids lived on one week of clothes. The rest was put away. Now, I, that is smart. That's actually smart. If you know that there's clothing that doesn't have bed bugs in it, you can take and bag that by the door and wear that 
in and out of the house. That way you know you're not actually accidentally taking bed bugs into your car. I actually go over that in my last video, my, my most recent video that just came out Tuesday. I actually go through a little snippet in that video showing how to treat a car too. So if you're interested, it's like the third time I've gone over it in my videos where you can see the different places that I, that I treat my car. So go back and, and look at that if you're interested, maybe after the stream, or you can go do it and then come back. I'll still be here. Um, it's only like a 14 minute long video. It's not very long. And in fact, if you want to go to the part about the car, you can just skip about halfway in and I'm, and I'm talking about the car. Um, I didn't realize you'd watch that video, Caveman. If retreat is necessary to use Crossfire, I use Crossfire on a retreat. Um, I know where local transit had a pretty bad case. I always put my clothes in an enclosed laundry basket, garbage bin with a lid as soon as, as, soon as I get inside. Um, let's see, no outside clothes. Oh, thank you, Jamie. Appreciate that. Jamie just donated two bucks. Thanks for the answer on the fleas. Very frustrating. <laughs> you didn't have to donate anything. I'm just here for fun. Um, let's see. My wife is watching that, that, that trial. She watches that trial. Okay? If you can hear the background, my wife is obsessed with Johnny Depp in this trial. So... What platform are people asking you questions on? They're asking me questions on um, YouTube. It's in my links in my bio, in case you were wondering. Someone in TikTok was asking, uh, and you can ask in TikTok too. I'll answer your questions, but I won't be able to show. I'm, I'm, I show so TikTok and YouTube. I simo simultaneously will stream both platforms. Um, the questions that are asked are always answered through my YouTube platform, through my screen shares. If I have to go and look up a label, or I have to go and look up pictures, or show you how to do this, or how to do that, or draw. Sometimes I do demonstrations using drawing. I use like paint, and I show people how to do certain things. If I have to do that, I'm going to do it on my computer. You won't be able to see that answer on TikTok. So, honestly, it's a way to bring people from TikTok to YouTube because YouTube is what I like to stream on. I do funny stuff on TikTok. I've got lots of videos on TikTok in case you were wondering. There's different things I do there too. So y'all can go follow me there too if you're interested. Um, but my wife's obsessed with this Johnny Depp trial. I'm telling you, the Amber Turd and Johnny Depp and all this stuff is just... It's com it's comedy gold, but the Hollywood's Hollywood is Hollywood. It's Holly Weird. Isn't that what they call it? Holly Weird? Yes, a lot of people do miss their cars. They don't treat their cars. You really need to treat your cars because I've done houses many times where the bed bugs are actually coming back from the car. And if the tr car had been treated, they wouldn't have bed bugs. Um, we haven't seen bed bugs in months now. I'm starting to relax. I appreciate your videos. Thank you, Yogi. Um... I squished what looked like an apple seed, and it is yellow inside. Is that a bed bug? Shouldn't be. Bed bugs are usually red inside. They they have blood, like a rusty brown, reddish color. I'm seeing random flying ants in my house. I live in Denver, Colorado. How can I get rid of them? Um, Alpine is really good for ants. I've got videos on ants. If you go to my my stream, my well, not my stream, but my channel, and after you subscribe which is always important for the, you know, got to hit that subscribe for that YouTube algorithm. You click here and you go ants. And it's important to click here. Use this search, not the one up here. This is searching all of YouTube. This search just is by just my channel. And so I've got the very number one video is, is how to get rid of ants. So you could click this and you watch that Liberty Bibbity thing, share, copy, and I'll post it in the chat so you can see it. There you go. There you go. So, that's how you find it. But it's important. Now, I have had people tell me they couldn't find my videos because they use the wrong search function. You need to search right here. And you don't have to be subscribed to the channel to, to search that. But if you, if you go here, this search is my specific channel for all the videos because I have hundreds of videos. I have over 400 videos on bugs. So, anyway. All right. Um, if they are in the car, will they be obviously visible? Not always. No, sometimes they hide away. 
Um, I'm here now. I asked a question on TikTok. Oh, what question did you ask? Let me see. Is it how do fly, fruit flies? How do fruit flies? Or whatever? <laughs> Where they come from? Um, let's see. I just read the tempered label, and it says to reapply if there's a sighting in 7 to 10 days as a plant is needed. Mix rate. Eight. Yep, that's right. You have to mix it. You have to treat every, every week to 10 days. Let's see. Have you ever seen bed bugs behind walls, baseboards yourself? Yes, I have. That's very common. I see them there all the time. Um, in fact, I have a video that I did, and I cannot remember which one it is, but there's a video where I'm actually talking about where to treat for bed bugs, and I am in a home with bed bugs, and I am treating a baseboard, and when I spray under the baseboard, you can actually see the bed bug in the little teeny tiny crack. You can see him in there with his little you know, body. So yes, I see that all the time. In fact, one of the very first bed bug jobs I ever did, I was in my 20s. It was a long time ago. My first bed bug job I did, I was 17. But I did another one when I was like 21, 22. And it, they had that, you know, that sticky, weird type of baseboard. It's like glued to the wall. It's not really nailed. It's more like a piece of rubber. I peeled that thing back and found bed bugs living behind one of those before. That was really crazy. There was a lot of them back there too. So, yes, they like to live behind the baseboards. There were none on the bed at all. I didn't find any bed bugs on the bed at all. They were actually living behind the baseboard, all of them. There was no sign they had ever even been living on the bed at all. So, and it was a child's bunk bed that I found them in that bedroom. I remember because it was, it was actually crazy where I found them. Let's see. Um, while here, my mom is complaining about ants in the community garden. Uh, ants are just doing ant things in my mind. Um... Autumn, I believe many would be hiding in these places. It's not just beds. I found them in books, too. Yes, I found them in books. In fact, if you go to... See my X-Men shirt. If you go... I'm a nerd. I like, I like my comic books. Um, in fact, I've, I've written comic books. I have comic books. I have comic books on Amazon. But I don't like to talk about my comics on YouTube. But... If you're interested, maybe one day I'll show you what I what I used to write when I was a kid. Um, I've got like over 20 issues that I've written. I had fleas in my house last spring. My dog brought it home from PetSmart. They fed off of not only my dogs, but me too. Yes, yes. See, one of the things about fleas is fleas, a lot of people don't know, but fleas can actually breed off of a human blood. Um, most fleas need the animal that they are like cat fleas, dog fleas. There's different names for fleas. And dog fleas typically do need a dog to breed. But cat fleas can actually breed off of human being, human blood. They don't, they can't live on a person because people don't have the undercoat. You know, we, we just, I mean, this, this is all the coat I can, this is my undercoat right here. No flea is going to be able to hold on to that. You know, that ain't nothing. And so, or that, you know, they're not going to be able to hold on to your hair. But, um, so they'll jump on you, they bite you, they fall back off, they lay eggs. If they're, they, they can actually live on a cat or a dog. So, Hi, Mr. Bugman. My local pest control wants to use permethrin. They don't use Crossfire. What are your thoughts on permethrin? Uh, permethrin is a synthetic pyrethroid. Um, they used to work on bed bugs. They might work, but I use Crossfire for bed bugs. The problem with permethrin, depending on the label, most permethrin-based pesticides are not labeled to be used on the bed. And that's an issue when you're dealing with bed bugs. You need to treat the areas the bed bugs actually live in, um, not the areas they don't live in. Yeah, you know, if they don't, if they, if if they're if they're not living, you know, how do I say this? You need to treat the bed. You need to use something you can treat the bed with. So, but thank you. That's why I use Crossfire. Now I don't know where you live. There are areas of the world Crossfire is not available. There are states that Crossfire is not available. It's available to pest control technicians. But it's not available to the general public. And so if you live in an area like the UK, Canada, um, you may not be able to use Crossfire. There are other options that work better than permethrin. But permethrin used to kill bed bugs, and there are still some areas of the world that permethrin does work. I've used bifenthrin 
to kill bed bugs, which is also a synthetic pyrethroid. So, but thank you very much, Rick. You didn't have to give me any money at all. You really didn't. I, I like to answer the questions. You ask me. I'm trying to get to every one of them. The I will tell you though, and this is not you know trying to ask for money or anything like that, but I see super chats. <laughs> they they glare. Uh, you see that big orange blur blurb right there. I can't like deny that that's not there. That is absolutely there. I see that right away. So that's crazy. But you didn't need to do that. You really don't. I will get to your question eventually, and I don't mind you re-asking if I don't get to it right away. I mean, you can call me. That's the phone number right there. If you're interested, you can call me. In fact, let me turn my desktop audio on because that's why no one could hear my music earlier. Um, I had to bag and seal my comic book. Man, I miss my comic books. I lost my comic books in my divorce, and I just, I miss my comics. I wanted to pass them on to my kids, and I don't have them anymore. I had some pretty cool issues. I love comics. That's why I write comics. I like to draw when I get when I get time to do it. I don't get a lot of time for art. I do a lot. I do a lot. So... I was getting bit, then they would lay eggs in my couch. Oh, yes, yes. Alpine. So if you go to my Amazon page, which that's this link right here. I'll copy that link and paste it. I've got fleas in here. So if you scroll down, let's see, lice, ticks. And someone was actually asking in my YouTube if they're here in the chat. I don't know if they're here or not, but there's lice right there. Um... Because someone was asking me, they said, you should do a video on lice. I actually have done a video on lice. It's a long time ago, but I, ha I do have one. But here's fleas. So this is fleas right here. This is what I recommend for fleas. Now, you don't have to buy this big 500-gram 500 500 bottle. They actually have a smaller version. Let me see if it's just right here. It's not. Um, let's search Alpine WSG. And there, there it is right there. So there's the packets for Alpine WSG. Now I'll show you what I mean, why why I think you should buy this for fleas. Well, one, it just kills fleas. It works really, really well for flea treatment. It's amazing. But if you go to, let's go here and go Alpine WSG label. So here's the label for Alpine. I actually had this up earlier today. I was reading it. Um... I'm a nerd. I like bugs. Anyway, so let's scroll down to the flea section of this label. <sighs> All right, so just to put things in perspective of the amount of money you're going to spend to kill your fleas. All right, so there's the Alpine. All right, you need 10 grams. One packet. It comes with five packets. One packet is 10 grams. You're going to spend... 26, 26, 2665, all right, on Amazon. That's pretty cheap for five packets of Alpine, all right? Now, it takes 10 grams. It says apply to infested areas or a potentially infested area, such as rugs, floors, carpets, upholstered furniture, so your couch that you're saying that the bed bug eggs are falling into, treat that, pet beds, pet resting areas. When applying to upholstered furniture, Treat under the cushions in areas where flea development can occur. So you pull your cushions off and you spray down inside your couch. And very few labels actually allow for this specific treatment. But this is needed to be able to get rid of fleas. You need to be able to do this on your upholstered furniture. Whether it is a Lazy Boy recliner or a couch or a, you know, a sofa, love seat, whatever... This is what you need to be able to do to get rid of those fleas, and it is absolutely effective. And in fact, I recommend removing, like, so if you're going to treat a bathroom floor, for example, and you've got, like, a bath mat in there, take the bath mat up, lay it over the edge of the, the tub, spray the whole bathroom floor, put the, the rug back on top of the floor, and then spray the top of the rug, too. So that way you treat the bath mat, you treat underneath the bath mat, because it's, it's touching a treated floor, you treat in all that area, you get really good. Under under, If you can roll up area rugs, do that. Roll up the rug, treat under the rug, roll it back out, and treat the top too. That's a really good way to get rid of fleas. It's, it's really important. You need to do that. 
these days I read digital because I ran out of bookshelf space, but I do collect odd. Yeah, see, I do have, I actually have a book um, that I wrote on bed, bu- uh, bed bugs, getting rid of bed bugs. It's actually on my, um, let's see, on my website, on my Amazon page. There it is right there. So if you click that, that's my Troublesome Pest Solutions, Volume 1. It's uh, bed bugs, cockroaches, and fleas. It's Kindle edition. It's free. Zero. It's I think it's like a ninety nine cent if you get it on the digital like the PDF or whatever it is ninety nine cent, but it's free if you've got Kindle Unlimited, so it's cheapest. It's pretty cheap. It's forty. I think it's like forty five pages, forty one pages long, and it's got bed bugs, fleas, and cockroaches. So I think I, it's like ninety nine cent. It's cheap. I don't I don't charge. Whoop! That's not the screen I wanted. Huh. It's 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 as cheap as as Amazon would let me host it. So, um. Let's see, what else do people say here? Oh, excuse me. I'm having such trouble in my senior living community. I wish you lived in Illinois so you could help. I'm at my wits end with this bed bug trouble. I'm so afraid my residents and associates. What about ants? Somebody asked, what about ants? I don't know what you're asking about ants. You need to be more specific. TikTokers, you got to actually ask a question. I could teach you how to kill ants, but you got to come over to YouTube and click my links because that's where they're at. I can't really post them on my uh, TikTok. They're, I mean, I could, but I don't have the ability. I'm too busy with YouTube right now. Um, does Alpine work for flying ants too? Yeah. Yeah, you just treat the house. Flying ants have to be coming from somewhere. If you treat around your windows and your doors and cracks, crevices, places that the ants are attracted to, they'll die. Cracks and crevices around like baseboards and stuff, shoe molding, places like that. Will the crossfire work on couch fabric? Yes, it will. But yeah, and you should turn your couch upside down too. See, when you turn your couch upside down, let me let's do a art segment. Paint paint. All right, let's do this. All right, so when you turn your couch upside down, let's do this one. All right, so let's say your cat, this is underneath your couch. You're looking underneath the couch. Okay, you got a leg here, 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 and here. But you also have Let's go back to this. Let's change the outline. You're going to have a thin little membrane like that goes, and I, I call it the felt bottom. But anyway, you'll have that piece right there. Now, it's really hard to see that on the screen, but it's it's you'll have staples. So it's easier. If you can remove this fabric, I recommend removing it because it w- you'll notice that when you pull that up under the couch, now if this is a three cushion couch, like a regular standard couch, not a love seat, you will have a wooden beam here and a wooden beam here. And sometimes you'll even have a beam that goes all the way across like this in order to keep stability in your couch. All right. The bed bugs will live around these cracks. They will live in like this spot right here where those wood joins together in the joints. They will live, take and unscrew the legs, these these legs right here. This is, good. This is a leg. I know it, it, it's not the best picture in the world. Come on, give me a break. But you need to unscrew the legs. You need to treat around. If you can't remove this piece of felt, you need to treat really heavy. You need to peel it back if you can. Like if you curl it back around the staples and treat all around that edge on the bottom of your couch because the bed bugs will live there. It, they'll eventually crawl out and get on the couch. You, you don't. I guess the, the the answer to the question is you don't necessarily have to flip the couch over to kill the bed bugs. But how fast do you want to get rid of your bed bugs? That's the thing. Most people would answer that question like I don't never wanted the bed bugs at all. This is I want them gone now. All right. And if you want them gone now, 
this, this is how you do it. You need to treat underneath the, the, the couch, inside it if you can. You may only be able to make holes in this piece of black fabric, which is fine. You can make holes in it and treat. You don't have to take the whole piece of fabric off. A lot of times, I don't take it all the way off. I just make holes and treat through it. But your couch is going to sit. like So if you're looking at your couch, you'll have your cushions like there. And then you'll have your dividers like this. All right. And then you'll have your back cushions here like that all right now now we're looking at the couch like it would sit in your living room okay there's your legs it's not the best picture but because i got the bed book show covering it up but basically this is what this is if you were looking at the couch like your couch is sitting on the floor all right so you need to pull these cushions up you need to pull these cushions up to treat your couch you need to actually pull all three cushions up sit them to the side all right and then you're going to want to treat inside you want to pull this stuff back and you want to treat all down inside this couch really really well and then you'll want to take your cushions and i've shown this on other videos too that i've got but in your cushion if you if you take your cushion and you look at it you'll have a zipper all right you want to open that zipper and treat down inside that cushion and then zip it back up and treat the zipper itself and you do that on all your cushions and all the seams, all around the seams, all around every cushion, and then put the cushions back on the couch. I usually will sit them up like this, long ways, inside the couch, sit them like where you would normally sit, just sit them long ways, because then it allows for even airflow all the way around, and they will, uh, they'll dry faster. But yes, and, and if these cushions back here come off, you need to take them off and you treat all around those too. So. Well, let me see if I can find that. Oh, wait, wait, let's go ahead and cancel that. Let's minimize that because I'll probably have to bring that up again. Let me see here. Holy cow. Anyway. Does Alpine work for flying ants? Okay, I already answered that. Um, My question is, I've had tried, let's see, sorry, I'm just trying to figure out where I left off. I've heard of dry cleaners getting bed bugs, yes. It's not very common, because of all the chemicals and stuff, it's not very common, but it does happen. My question is, I've tried Finvastar, and the Bedlam didn't work. I also just purchased Crossfire. Can I use the same plastic sprayer? You need to buy a new one. Um... Don't 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 use the same sprayer. Buy a new one. Um, and yes, permethrin is toxic, but it won't necessarily kill the cat. Um, actually, so I'll explain. I'll explain why it won't kill your cat. Um, there are lots of things that are that are that are uh, toxic to animals. There's lots of things that are toxic toxic to you. Um, in the proper quantities. But permethrin is used to treat scabies. You could use it to treat scabies. You could use it to treat um, ticks and fleas. In fact, let's go, let's look at Walmart. Let's go to Walmart. Walmart somewhere everybody knows. Walmart.com and hearts. H A R T Z, I think is what it's. Or is it H? That is H A R T Z. Yeah. Okay. So let's go to their website. All right, this is a very popular website, very popular pesticides, all right? So let's go with cats. Let's do flea and tick control for cats on hearts. This is a brand. Um, we want, let's see. Um, let's look at this one. This is a flea collar. Um... Okay, that doesn't have permethrin in it anymore, but permethrin's a really common spot on the neck. It's not very effective. It's not very good. 
Um, you can build a immunity to permethrin because it's a synthetic pyrethroid. All right, so let me let me just quick explain. This is going to take a lot longer. I, I really fell down the rabbit hole. So when somebody comes in and says, for those watching, permethrin 10 is toxic to cats. Permethrin 10 is toxic to you if you misapply it. There are safe applications of synthetic pyrethroids that you could do to your pets, whether it's permethrin, uh, you know, lots of different, uh, you know, flea tick applications that are toxic if you give the animal too much. The problem is, is that it, permethrin is a cholinesterase inhibitor. Now, I've talked about this before on my channel. Let me, I'll, I'll do, let me see, let me do another one of those uh, drawing with Jason's because this is, this is going to be, um, where is it? There it is. All right, so let's clear this, and I'll explain to you how pesticides work. So let's go with file, new, don't save. All right, so your nervous synapse. Now, this is going to be very juvenile, but I'm going to try to explain it in the best way that I can on how the nervous system works. So you have a synapse, which usually breaks apart like a tree. So you have to think of it like a tree, all right? This is your nerve that comes together like this, all right? And your other nerve synapse is like this, all right? Now, this is where the electricity takes place, right here. That's where the electricity makes its jump because people are like batteries. That's why they talk about it in the Matrix. So like, you know, people are like batteries, all right? So... There is a chemical that flows between the synapses that's called cholinesterase, all right? It's a, it's a chemical. Without this chemical that flows between these synapses, the electricity never makes its jump. Imagine it like electrical wires, okay? It's like the, the, the wire is severed. There's no connection at all unless this chemical exists because the wires don't actually touch. The, the chemical causes the continuity, all right? So when, when that chemical is eliminated by using permethrin, cypermethrin, lots of different thrin, thrins are cholinesterase inhibitors, meaning they inhibit the production of cholinesterase. It causes nervous system failure. All right, mammals have cholinesterase. Cats, dogs, people have cholinesterase. Now, not all, not all pesticides work that way, but synthetic pyrethroids, it's a very common occurrence. When you give a pet too much, like if you give your, like, let's, let's give you an example of how you can overdose your cat on permethrin. If you have given your cat a dip, like you've dipped your cat, you've given them a bath, basically, in a flea treatment that has permethrin in it. And then you go to Walmart, because it does last, it does build in the body. It's eliminated quicker than most other pesticides, but it can be there as a residual for a while. So the cat has this in their bloodstream, okay? Then you go to Walmart and you buy a spot on the neck or a flea collar that also has permethrin in it. That's going to be more permethrin. So you're actually going to end up giving the animal an overdose. You can possibly overdose your pet on permethrin by bathing them in permethrin, by giving them a spot on the neck treatment with permethrin, or maybe they still have fleas so you take them to the vet and the vet then prescribes permethrin that then you give them, then you're like triple dosing them on permethrin, which can kill or seriously harm your pet. So you don't want to give them the same thing over and over. That's why it's really important to read your labels. Like I talk about, the label's the law. You know, that The label's the law. You need to follow the label, and you don't want to give them the same thing over and over and over. It's like if you have a fever and you take Tylenol, and in two hours, you take ibuprofen. You don't take Tylenol again because you can OD on Tylenol. So you take permethrin, uh, not permethrin, so you take ibuprofen instead. So you can take the two in order to keep your fever down. And that way you're not going to overdose on a medication you don't want to overdose on. Because you have to treat, you have to treat flea and tick, you know, pesticides as a medication you're doing for your pet. Also, if you treat the floor. So, so let's say you do a flea treatment on your house and you don't keep your animals out of the house. Well, then they're going to absorb the flea treatment through their feet. And who knows how much they're going to get into their body by doing that. So you, do, you, never, you always want to be very, very careful 
when you're uh, uh, giving your pets any kind of treatment for fleas or ticks or anything like that because it's very easy to overdose your animals. Don't do it. Be careful. Is Crossfire legal, illegal in Illinois? I don't know. I don't think it's illegal in any state. I think it's just restricted use in some states. It's not actually illegal. Like in New York, if you're, you can't personally buy it unless you have a license. You can get Crossfire in New York. You just have to have a license to purchase it. They will not sell it to you unless you have a license. I had a water leak in a wall behind my kitchen sink and I started noticing roaches. I got some general roach killer and I got the leak fixed. No more roaches. Yes, roaches are attracted to water. Um, let me show you, let me show you this caveman. There you go. That's my comment. That's one of them. That's issue 20. Now this is newer. This was, I don't know when I made this one. Um, I honestly don't have a year on it. I have no idea when I drew that one. But that's one of them. I've done that since I was married to my wife, actually, in the, within the last 10 years. That's one of them. And I've got other ones, too. Oh, there we go. Publication date is February 23rd, 2016. So there you go. Six years. Six years? Yep. Six years. So just search Superbat. And it's Jason Akers. Of course, that's my name. That's the author. There's somebody here. It's got a super bat, and I don't know what this is, but this is definitely after I made mine. I might have to go after him. But anyway, that's... I've got lots of them. So, this is issue 23, 22, 20... 21? Is that 21? 21, yep. 21. And yeah, these are ones I drew when I was like 12, so... They're up there, too. But anyway, enough about my artwork. Um, can you treat electric recliners? Yes, unplug them before treating them. Um, be careful where you treat them. Don't treat electrical connectors or anything like that. Um, um, Sorry, just trying to catch up. I'm reading. Has a lot, lot said. When I go off on tangents talking about being safe and stuff, it's I, I lose my place. We had a dog for almost eight years. We were lucky enough she didn't get fleas. F Dogs are better about not getting fleas. Cats are the worst. Well, if you think about it, if a cat is running through the yard chasing after a varmint, they're going to jump right in a bush after something. A dog's not. Dog's going to stop. They're going to say, oh, I'm not going in there. You know, but a cat will absolutely chase a rabbit or a gopher, groundhog, you know, whatever, mouse, rat. They will absolutely jump right into a bush if they're trying to hunt a rat or something. A dog's going to probably give up and turn around. They might stay outside the bush and bark, but they're not going to jump in the bush. So cats typically go places that fleas are worse, like I said, under bushes and places that they like to kind of hide out. Ticks aren't just a nuisance anymore. They spread Lyme disease. Oh, ticks spread Lyme's disease, alpha gal, Rocky Mountain spotted fever. They're uh, and not just to mention they can you can get infections from the bites and they're no flea, ticks are horrible. I hate ticks. Ticks are awful. Um, is Apprehen the best, most effective bed bug treatment? I hear it's one of the most expensive. Yes, it is one of the most expensive. It does work, but it's very difficult to apply it properly. You need to hire a professional. If you're going to use Apprehend, you are going to waste your money unless you hire a professional to do it. It, it does take training to use Apprehend correctly, and it's not something you can just teach somebody over the internet. It's something you have to learn how to do. Isn't ivermectin a dewormer? Yes, it is. Um, appreciate all your knowledge. Uh, have you ever had bed bugs yourself? I did. I, in fact, I just put a video up for that, about that last week. Uh, this week. This week, actually. Um, if you go to my channel and you click subscribe, 
Because you got to do that for the YouTube algorithm. You know, look, help, help a man out. Yeah, click that, subscribe to my channel. You don't have to like the video, but there's the video right there. It's, it's, I brought bed bugs home with me. That's, that's the video. Let's see, let's click that video. Um, and scroll down, share, copy. There you go. That talks about how I brought them home with me. I thought you guys wanted to hear it. So there you go. But, um, I try, I read all my comments. See, I, I read them all. Every one of these comments you see, I approve myself. I read them all. Because I, I like comments on my videos, but I don't want people just giving others bad advice. So I read every comment before it gets posted. Um, so I don't just get, I don't want just somebody coming in and saying, oh, I use this, this worked for me, and it's, it's really a bad idea. I've had people recommend spraying themselves down with pesticides and stuff, and I don't want people to do that. So I read every single comment that comes through my channel. Every one of them. If you see it on my channel, I have read it, and I have approved it. My friend's mom had such a severe flea infestation, she completely tended her home and had it bombed. She shaved her hair through all of her belongings, sold her car. You, they can't live in your hair. Fleas can't live on human hair. Humans don't have a thick enough, uh, they don't have thick enough uh, undercoat. They, fleas can't live on your hair. If she might have had some lice, I'd shave my head if I had lice. What is that? There we go. Autofocus. The Lucas says he's sad for the bed bugs. Are you talking about these bed bugs? Right here? Is it going to focus? Come on, focus. Focus. Well, it's not going to focus. These bed bugs are dead. I do have bed bugs. These bed bugs? I have lots of bed bugs. Lots of bed bugs. Oh, for TikTok. Let me show TikTok. See, see? Those are my bed bugs. Actually, the camera shows them better on TikTok than YouTube. So, maybe I need a new webcam. Might have to buy me a new webcam. Should talk to me. Talk to me. I, I tell you how to kill bed bugs. I tell you how to fleas. I, I don't. I don't mind helping people kill their fleas. Mm, 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 mm. No sleep. Actually, it's funny when I was a um. It was. Let's see. Rory is six seventeen. So he was, this was five years ago, he went to a friend's house on a birthday party. And the little boy come up to me and he said, are you Rory's dad? And I said, yeah. And he said, you kill bugs, you're an exterminator, right? And I said, yeah. What's your favorite kind of bug? And I said, dead ones. No, really, really, what is? I said, dead ones. Dead ones make me a living. I make a living off of dead bugs. I love dead bugs. They're my favorite. So... When you say dead bugs are the best kind of bugs, dead bed bugs are the best kind. <laughs> Warning, do not ever pour flammable liquids on your skin. Do we really live in a world where we have to give people that kind of warning? It's like the warning on an iron, remove your clothing before ironing your clothes. Do we really need these kind of warnings? Do we really need to tell people, hey, don't put gasoline on yourself, don't put kerosene, don't put alcohol all over your body? Do we really live in that kind of world? I guess we do. I guess we do. If a bed bug could constantly get a meal, how many years can one live? I think it's three years. I think it's three years on the life cycle of a bed bug. I think that's how long they live. Let's see. Let's look it up. 
how many oh wait let's use a different window how many years the uh, can't type tonight let's see what people say let's find a decent website six to ten months that's overall consensus for all these sites say six to ten months I could just I know they live longer than that that is not true that's not possible that's not let's that's, that's not possible Because if they can live 10 to 18 months without a blood meal, which is, now I'm confused. Maybe they're talking about nymphs, because nymphs could live for about four months without a blood meal. There we go. Scientific study showing exact time bed bugs die without a blood meal. Um, it says adult bed bugs can live 14 months without feeding. Nymphs can live five months without a blood meal. Um, so that 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 tells you right there at least 14 months. So that these are not. I mean that's Orkin and PCT Magazine, different people. Oh, there we go. There we go. It says stop. Advertising to me. Okay, so the average length of a typical bed bug's life spans from egg hatch to death in a laboratory environment with ideal conditions is 6 to 12 months. Um, look at the ads. It's crazy. But this is the same page that says 14 months. So, I don't honestly think people know. I don't honestly think people know how long they live. I'm going to do some studies and pull up some, some peer review studies. And I'll get back to you. I'll make a video on it. Um, there's diazinon, I think, used to be cut with diesel fuel when it was brand new chemical before it got mixed with petroleum. Petroleum is a really common um, additive to pesticides. And so uh, a petroleum distillate, which is much in the same as an oil-based paint, it's, you know, it's what you use to carry the pigment. Um, and petroleum distillates are also in pesticides. It's very common to find them in pesticides, which are flammable most pesticides are actually flammable if you have a bug bomb that you're going to set off in your house it makes these little teeny tiny particles of, of liquid and it sprays everywhere all right those little particles of liquid have oil in them and if they come into contact with a pilot light or you know any kind of open flame they'll actually explode and so that's why they always tell you on the back of a bug bomb, if you read a bug box of bug bombs, you actually read the label, it'll tell you to make sure all pilot lights are off, that there's no open flame in the house, because if you had one, it would blow up. So. It's Kenju here. Hey, Kenju, how are you? I've already had a donation of 20 bucks tonight. You don't have to give me nothing. Oh, I've got a video on springtails. So, uh, cause Rebellion asked about springtails. So if you go here, go to my channel and search uh, springtail. There it is, how to get rid of springtails. I've got a video on it. So you click here.
and then you share and you copy and I'll post it for you so it's easy to find there you go springtails hello Jason hope you and your family are doing great oh they are they are I haven't heard any complaints I do but I I, I kind of I kind of I don't listen to the complaints I'll let that stuff kind of disappear into the environment I like I just like oh, I got my blinders on I can't see that I can't hear that so as far as I know everybody's great I love caffeine I wish I still oh I do have coffee oh my goodness see that's like finding a twenty dollar bill in your in your in your in your uh in your dryer now it's gone no, I'm sad. You didn't have to pay me anything, did you? <laughs> I was just poking fun. I really, you don't have to give me anything. I'm going to start pretending like I don't see them. If I don't see them, it'll stop happening. Have you ever treated a generally clean home with bed bugs? All the time. All the time. The cleanest people call me for bed bug treatments. I have done some spotless houses. All right, let, let me show you. Let me show you an example of a clean house, a very clean house. So if you go to my channel, this is one of the number one viewed, like, do-it-yourself things. So you go... Just search extensive, E-X-T-E-N-S-I-V-E. -E. I wish I had picked a different title. Extensive, most extensive bed bug treatment on YouTube. You click there. Four years ago. All right, I posted this video four years ago. Now, we'll go, let's go here. All right, that's box spring, okay? That's pretty bad. That's pretty serious, okay? Now, you go here. Uh, I'm talking to the camera. This is a long time ago. But you go here, look at this room right here. Let's go right here. That's a clean house. It's a double wide. It's very clean. Very clean. Everything has its place. Everything's put in its place. Nothing here is what I would consider dirty. There's no dust. Even the ceiling fan is clean. This house was really clean. But you saw, you see that. That's really serious bed bug problem. And the house is just really clean. But see, you could see the bed bugs in this couch right here. You could kind of see. I could see it better probably than you can. But there were bed bugs in this couch. And see, there I am spraying. Got my B&G spraying inside the couch. And then uh, this, is the, this is a sectional. See? That's a clean room. That's a really clean, well put together living room. It's not dirty. It's not filthy. There's not grime or dust or, you know, it's it's a very clean room. And the bedroom, here's the master. See, that's a clean room too. There's not a bunch of stuff. I mean, there might be NGs right there in the corner, but there's nothing on the floor. It's clean. No clothes piled up or nothing. It's very clean. So, yes. I even have it documented on YouTube. A very clean house with bed bugs. So it doesn't matter how clean you are. Bed bugs want to bite you. They want to eat your blood. As long as you got blood, they will be. They will live with you. They don't care how clean you are. That bed, that king size bed, actually had them really bad. I wish I had gotten some up close to that, but that's. I, I figured if I if I showed you how I treated the 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 bed I was treating, then you get the general gist. There's no reason to show you a whole bunch of different beds. They're all the same. They're all built the same. They just need a host to feed on. Yep. Let's see. Our place is clean too. These things don't care. I brought them in from a dentist and the office is clean. Yes, that's true. I never thought about a dentist, but that makes sense. Because you think about it, if you have, you know, somebody came in and sat in a dentist chair, they probably don't wipe them down with Sterifab or anything between people. That You just go in and you sit in the chair after someone else was in there. And so if there's bed bugs on the chair from someone else's clothing... They'll, they'll get on you, and you'll take them home. So, 
That's actually before I had my decent uniform. That was a long time ago. Things, man, things have changed. It's crazy to look at the way I used to dress. The way I wore, because you have to wear long sleeve clothes. You have to wear a long sleeve when you're applying pesticide. So let me show you. So that's me. And I'm talking to the camera in that scene. That's a short sleeve shirt. And the way I the way I made label was I just wore a coat on the outside. So I had my long sleeves, I got my gloves on, and I got my long pants and my boots, same boots I always wear, and a hat on my head. That's the way I used to look. That's before I had my uniform. Now I've got, let's see if I can find a picture, a recent picture. Um, well, here's a picture of me and Emma. I can show you that one. Let's see. Um... Let's see if I can show you this. There you go. That's today. That's me and Emma sitting at a subway. And there, see, I've actually got a uniform shirt, long sleeve. Got my logo right there on my shirt. Got my, that's my hat, same one I'm wearing. I've come a long ways in almost five years. So. I'm not dirty, but I'm a book nerd, so sadly... I'm just giving them more places to hide. I'm horrible clutter. My desk is awful right now. If I showed you my desk, you'd be like, I can't believe this man. He's just, I mean, plus I'll show you. So, there's my, there's that, there's my phone. There's my work phone right there. There's Emma's glasses I was supposed to fix. I haven't fixed them yet. There's an Apple charger there. These are all my manuals for pest control. Okay. There's a little, uh, 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 apparently I've got the need for a scarecrow on my desk. I've got a ruler, an old school wooden ruler. i got some papers, notebooks, got an ink pen, got to have an ink pen. i got a book right here. i got a pair of pliers. Apparently I needed a pair of uh, linesman's pliers. Got those. i got other papers. i got air, look, I got, I got some headphones. I've got a, a, DS, a DS charger. There's a DS charger. Picture of my sister. I'll, I'll just, just, just a bunch of crap. A bunch of freaking crap. Can't keep my desk clean at all. Awful. 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 And that's just part of it. That's, that's part of the mess. Anyway. No, bed bugs do not feed on each other. They're not cannibalistic. Roaches? Roaches will feed on each other. They'll kill and eat each other, but bed bugs don't. If you want nightmares, you need to... Look, let me show you. So, I'm on TikTok right now. I'm actually streaming with TikTok. But my TikTok is TikTok... There we go. Here's my TikTok channel. Alright? You want to see some crazy stuff? Like, go, go watch some of these videos. This is... uh. These are now. I got my babies and stuff on here too. There's Finley. There's Finley with a filter. There's Finley with a filter. Um, there's spider mites or not spider mites. I'm sorry, clover mites. There's uh, there's Teddy Ruxpin right there. People don't know who he is. That's me. There's me when I was a baby. So I got all kinds of. There's my bed bug. That's a, so I, I try to put humor in pest control, but I've also got educational stuff on here too, like guarantees and. There's Crossfire, me and Crossfire. There's some funny stuff on here too, but I can't play this stuff. See, this is a tick. This is a uh, TikTok I made of a really bad bed bug job I did. And see now, there's just 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 really bad. So yeah, yeah. Follow me over there. Take a look. If you're on TikTok, take a look at my videos. I can't put. I can't honestly put everything that I put on TikTok on YouTube because YouTube likes to copyright strike everything I do. And so I can't do that. Otherwise, you'll never see my videos. That they, they'll stop existing. So uh, TikTok allows me more freedom of uh, artistic freedom. And so I like to put music and stuff like that to my videos that may be copyright striked on YouTube. So that's why I have them on TikTok. I have different videos on TikTok than I have on YouTube. So, um, so what do you have people do with bed? with bedding that can't be washed dried on high heat like a weighted blanket um just leave it beside the bed 
You know, drape it over a chair or something and leave it beside the bed and let the bed bugs crawl out and die. Because when they crawl out and they crawl over the bed, they'll die. The same thing is like, you know, like let's say you had a box of Matchbox cars. Let's say you had a shoebox of like collectible Matchbox cars that you've had since you were a kid that are underneath the bed. All right. You can't take those and throw them in the washing machine because they're toys. You know, if you, you could ruin them. So what do you do with them? Well, you open the box and leave it under the bed. And when the bed bugs crawl out of the box, they crawl up over the treated mattress, the box spring, because they're coming to you, right? You're, you're the blood meal. So they can't get a blood meal from a car, a matchbox car toy. They can't get a blood meal from a weighted blanket. Stop using the weighted blanket. Don't leave it on the bed. Put it in a box beside the bed or drape it over a chair or something. So the bed bugs are forced, if there's any living on the blanket, there probably aren't. But if they are, they will crawl off the blanket. They will come to try to bite you and they will crawl on your bed, they will bite you, they will die. And so the same thing that you would do with toys, bears, stuffed animals, whatever, you could take them, sit them in the corner, close enough to the bed where they know you're there, they'll come off of your belongings, they will come onto the bed, they will die. They will die when they come to the bed. So. Uh, when I'm, And I saw your, te your, your message on one of my videos too, asking about a weighted blanket. Jason, I wanted to say thank you for recommending Crossfire. I had bed bugs a year or so ago and followed your advice with Crossfire and have not had a bed bug since. Cool. Awesome. Share my videos. That's the way you can thank me. Share my videos. Get me out there. Let people know that this is this is something they can do on their own. Hey, does Crossfire from Amazon actually work well? Yeah, look at the... I just read a post from Daniel Lawrence. Uh, Poor Redneck World. Read that post right above your name from Daniel Lawrence. There's somebody who used it, and it works. Um, if Jennifer Lego's in here, she'll tell you it works. She used it. It killed hers, too. There's lots of people here in my chat that have used Crossfire and killed their bed bugs. It absolutely does kill bed bugs. It works really well. I still only had to do the one treatment, so I need to know the best way to treat a porch for spiders. Um Synthetic pyrethroids work the best on spiders. I find they work the best on spiders. So, demon, um, tau star, you know, they work, typically work the best on spiders. What you want to do to kill spiders is you want to treat the eaves, overhangs, all the places the spiders are making their webs, and then wait a couple of weeks, then brush the webs down. The reason you wait before brushing the webs down is because when you treat those eaves and overhangs, you're going to actually inadvertently treat the webbing as well which gives the spiders more contact surface area they can crawl over whether they're rebuilding their web or whether they're using existing webs that have gotten damp with the pesticide and that forces them to come into more contact with the chemical and kill the spiders quicker so that's the way you get rid of spiders and then you can brush the webs down crush any egg sacs or anything that you find um i also have old consoles in my bed storage but they're taped and sealed up uh, is whole house treatment recommended first time bed bug extermination? Yes. Yes. You have to treat the whole house. Don't, don't skip rooms. Do everything. I got them knocked out in one treatment. I probably over treated, but I was paranoid. Is there a such thing as over treatment? I didn't think that existed with, with bed bugs. Um, how long have I been streaming? I know full well I've been streaming longer than 26 minutes. Haven't I? How long have I been streaming for? There is no way that that's right. My program must have glitched on me at some point. Full well I've been... 86. Okay. 86 minutes. That's what I thought. My timer's all messed up on on my app. <laughs> it is not right. <sighs> I was just looking to try to figure out when I can log off. I'm tired, but I, I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. I like sitting here and talking to you guys, but I'm just tired. I wish I could get on earlier. If my kids would just behave and go to bed or not be wild and crazy, I could talk for longer periods of time. But it's hard when when you got little ones. Yeah, I got a, I got a, well, 
Well, you saw Emma. She's nine. I got a 17-year-old and nine-year-old. They're not a problem. But I've also got a, a three-year-old and a seven-month-old. And they make a lot of racket. My three-year-old will come over here and climb on my lap and sit here and say, I want to sit here and stream with you, Dad. And then push every single key on my keyboard. And I'm like, no, you can't do that. Stop doing that. I just want to push this one. You can't push that one. But what about this one? <sighs> Toddlers. They are hilarious, though. They are at Emma, when she was two, three years old, she used to come through and she knew when I was on the computer and I was doing videos or, or you know, working on, you know, paperwork or whatever, she'd come over and she'd hit the power button on my tower, turn my whole computer off. If she wanted attention, she she knew what to do. She'd come over and push that little button, turn the whole computer off. So, yep. Emma was oh my goodness, she there are, I, I can't tell you how many times she has turned my computer completely off because she wanted attention. Charlie's not so bad. Now, if I call my wife on the phone during the day and he wants to ask her a question, he knows that if he hits her Apple Watch, he can actually flip that button and turn the phone off. And he'll do that so he can get her undivided attention. So, Crossfire is the best thing for bed bugs. It's the best thing for bed bugs. Uh, Tempered will work for bed bugs as well, but you need to treat. You need to really treat once a week. You really do. You, if it says seven to ten days, you need to do it every seven to ten days because it breaks down faster than Crossfire. So you need to treat regularly. If that's what, if you can get Tempered, I've had people tell me they couldn't even get Tempered in Canada. And so if you can get Tempered, then you need to, you know, that's going to be better than a permethrin or something like that. So, Clay, you're asking about Alpine. What did you have a question about Alpine? What's your question? Because I don't think I understand. Hello, this is Jason with Green Acres Pest Control. Can I help you? you. Yes, uh, I, I have a physical therapist that comes to the house. And I thought I had bed bugs. I may have, may, may have had a mild uh, outbreak of bed bugs. But whenever I told them uh, that I, I had bed bugs that come into my house, they, they refused to come back anymore until I get a, a letter from a, a certified pest, pest control that, that I'm clean of bed bugs. And so I, I did it myself, and it, that, that, that doesn't, doesn't satisfy them. Is, is there any way of getting a, a certified letter that uh, the bed, I don't, no longer have bed bugs? You would need to have somebody come out and actually do an inspection. I've done those before for people. So what I do is when a customer calls me and they say, hey, look, the same story that you had, I would say, well, yeah, let me come out and take a look. And sometimes they will charge you for a letter like that, but it's not, I, I charge for it because I, I actually charge for a bed bug inspection. If people call me, I go out and I flip every piece of furniture over in the house and I am going to find them. If they're there, I, I will find them. And so that way I can be sure that if I give the letter to somebody stating that, you know, so-and-so does not have bed bugs, then, you know, I know the letter is true and I won't get into trouble. Because that's the thing, when you're, when you're an exterminator and you're providing a company that has the risk of their, their, 
their employees bringing bed bugs back to their home, and you have told them, look, I know this house doesn't have bed bugs. You better be sure that house doesn't have bed bugs. Okay, thank you. No, oh, yeah, no problem. That was an easy question. But yeah, that's I actually do that all the time for people. Just to just to clarify, I've I've actually done letters for people before um, saying they were bed bug free. Uh, I had a I do Airbnbs a lot, and I actually have had people come in and try to claim the Airbnb had bed bugs to try to get free rent. And when you go there and you do an inspection, you find that they had, didn't have bed bugs at all, and uh, they were just trying to get free rent. And so I will write letters of certification stating that you know the property doesn't have bed bugs. It was probably this, or it was probably that, or whatever. So is Alpine good? Alpine's really good. Alpine's not. Alpine is what I use preventatively for bed bugs. So if you were a regular customer of mine, I would treat the house with a preventative for Alpine. But as far as elimination, I use Crossfire. But Alpine's good for lots of things. Alpine kills, you know, ants. It kills cockroaches. It kills uh, silverfish. It's it's crickets. Lots of bugs will die from Alpine. It's a really good pesticide. It does yellow jackets. It's amazing on yellow jackets. So, yeah, Alpine's actually really, really good chemical. I like it. I use it. It's a standard for me. A lot of exterminators don't use Alpine as a, a general pesticide, but I use it inside every single customer. I use it on every customer I have uh, inside, and then outside I use uh, a preventative, whether it's a synthetic pyrethroid or something. I usually use a repellent to try to repel bugs away, and then inside I use Alpine because Alpine's a non-repellent. Bugs don't see it. They don't know it's there. And so uh, I've got like 30 people watching the channel now. You guys should like and, and subscribe to my channel. At least give me a thumbs up. I'd appreciate it if you did. Um, <clears throat> I've done five treatments. Haven't seen any more since. I guess I can stop now. <laughs> I, I would. Uh, 25 years ago, I'd have thought nothing of adopting a nice-looking couch chair from a back alley. I wouldn't dream of doing it now. There's a reason they're throwing that furniture away. You know, I've had people tell me that they that they drove by and saw like what looked like a practically brand new couch. Those are the ones you want to steer clear of. You see somebody throwing away a brand new couch on the corner, don't pick that up. It's probably full of bed bugs and it ain't worth trying to treat it and get rid of them. So, but I've been on for an hour and a half. I have got to get off of here. I'm about ready to fall asleep. So, you guys have a really great night. I appreciate it. And I am going to real quick show you. So, I have let me show you what I do. I've been doing this every live stream, every live stream. So if you go to my community channel, I have votes. I did, this is my vote from last week, all right? So if I go do a vote, let me see if I can do it right here. Let's go to YouTube. Hey, itchy eye. And go to your channel, all right? Let's go to community. All right, I'm going to post a poll. Which video would you be interested Tuesday? All right, and let's do a poll. Let's do roaches. Give me some options, everybody. I can hold up to five options. Anybody got an option for a poll this week? It's illegal to use to sell used mattresses, but people do it. Spiders. I got two more options. Outdoor critters. And mosquitoes. All right. There we go. Post. All right. So now, if I refresh my screen, there we go. Roaches, bed bugs, spiders, outdoor critters, and mosquitoes. So there you go. Y'all go ahead and go vote tonight. As soon as I get offline, go over, check out the community tab, and leave me a vote, and we'll see what we're talking about. And hey, if you vote, leave a little comment below. 
give me a description. Like, like just mosquitoes? Okay, so what do you want from mosquitoes? Do you want to find out, you know, what pesticides are best for mosquitoes? How to how to effectively spray for mosquitoes? Um, you know, spiders. Like, you know, do, do you want like 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 how to prevent spiders? Uh, where to treat to kill spiders? You know, which spiders are poisonous? Which ones aren't? You know, give me some options. Get let me know what you want to know, because you know these are very general. I could do a video about anything. So like last week, bed bugs and DIY were my top two voted. Uh, in fact, bed bugs. Let's just show you. I'll just show you mine real quick. What mine looks like. All right, there's mine right there. And if you go down to the vote here, I have 42% for bed bugs, 21% DIY roaches was a close third, and then we have 7% for a review, and then silverfish was 12. I have a video on silverfish I've already filmed because people were curious about it. But um, those were my five options. And then my comments, I didn't have very many comments at all. I'm like, what about bed bugs would you like to see? So when you when you vote, Think about leaving me a comment below and give me an idea of what you'd like to actually know about bed bugs, you know, whatever it is that I'm that I'm talking about. Because like I said, I've got roaches, bed bugs, spiders, outdoor critters, and mosquitoes. Those are the options. So go vote and uh, I'll make a video. So y'all have a good one. I appreciate it. And uh, sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. And I will see you next time. Thank you.